Greetings, everyone. Well, I thought I'd try my hand at a live podcast, and it looks like I will be able to have a chat room here, so I will be able to interact with a lot of the beauties that are out there in all over the world on Spreaker, and be able to take questions and yeah, just share about the practical living, the experience of God's love. So I'm very grateful to have this opportunity to do this. I have not done Spreaker Lives before, but I thought I would start out with uh, this first episode and just take it from there. And a lot of times, as I just am having quiet time, I just am feeling the gratitude for the way that time and space have been orchestrated to convince the mind of its beautiful essence, of its divinity. And I have enjoyed sharing and extending in many, many opportunities that I have had. And it just feels like this is just one more of those opportunities. So, so here goes. First podcast. It's a beautiful sunset down here in Lake Chapala, Mexico. And I'm just looking out over the water and the, the mountains and the beautiful sun set in the background and just feeling such peace and contentment. It does seem that if you really came down to the essence of what following the Spirit's about, it's, it's really listen and follow. It's really tune in through your prayers, through your dedications, through your devotions. Just really tune in to what it is that lights you up, that swirls your heart cords, that really, really makes you feel vibrant and alive. And I think on this Living in God's Love podcast, I, I will recall a lot of the experiences that were so helpful to me in being open and staying so very open and so very alive and connected. There's a teaching in A Course in Miracles that says, trust would settle every problem now. And that is so different from the, the problem-solving techniques of analysis, of looking for methodologies and solutions in the world, it really turns the tables and says, oh, if you can come within and you can trust, and you are ready to receive what will be given, you will be shown that you actually have no problems and that you are sourced by the most loving presence. You are sourced by God, you are sustained by God, and that everything that you seem to need or believe you need will be met by this source while you believe you have need of it. So in that sense, this trust is, is very, very practical because it leads you to become dependent on the inner light and on the guidance and the instructions, on these expansive feelings that come from deep within and then radiate through you and out into the whole world. 
it takes a lot of practice and you could say convincing to to come to a state of mind where you realize that there's nothing outside of mind, that everything is a thought. And that as you release these time and space thoughts through the guidance, through the instructions, that you come to a state of rest. And this rest is what has been yearned for all along. Very, very, very peaceful. So you go from feeling like you're self-reliant in the personality sense to sustained by God's love in every way, in everything, in every place and time, in every conceivable situation, you feel completely sustained and therefore completely relaxed. And to me, it's important to look at your spiritual journey as an adventure. I think that was one of the most important early insights that I had was just a feeling of, wow, this is an adventure. This opening, this following, this trusting is an adventure like nothing I have ever seen before. Like nothing the world offers at all. Because as you trust and listen and follow, it's like doorways open up, opportunities open up, the way is shown, the way is given, and really it's more just a feeling of like step through it, step, step in it, step through it. At first there's some butterflies, some, some fluttering in the heart, like, wow, ooh, what is this? But actually, as you keep listening, following, stepping through, stepping through, stepping through, another way it's experienced is you, if you simply show up, you fully show up, very open, very trusting, very much in a show-me state of mind. Lord, show me, show the way, make my path clear, make it obvious. <laughs> One of my favorite prayers, make it obvious. And then the way is given, the way is shown. I think it, it's called the development of trust in the Course in Miracles in the Manual for Teachers because, because of the convincing that is required to wash away all beliefs in survival, in sustenance, in taking care of oneself and instead open to listening and, and allowing oneself to be carried, be carried along and taken care of in every circumstance. It never fails. And 
though there is a little trepidation oftentimes at the beginning, as you really relax into this and you allow yourself to just be carried and show up and to be fully present, you, you start to feel a happiness, a glee, a joyful feeling swirling within you that is so exhilarating because it's what you had hoped for. You had prayed for, but perhaps it just seemed hidden or out of, out of reach. But as this feeling grows stronger and stronger, it's, it's very apparent that it's very natural. And those previous states of mind of anxiety or worry, concern, struggle, those all start to feel more and more unnatural. Like you can't really hold them at all. You can't cling to them. I'm looking down, I'm seeing there's a, a chat box, so I'm going to type in a little hello. <laughs> and if anybody happens to be joining in and would like to ask a question or bring up a topic, have any curiosity, then yes, please do. You're most welcome. I think it's talked about a lot of, of leading a life of love and devotion, but actually you really have to make a space for that in your heart. You have to have room for that single-pointed devotion. It's like you have to allow yourself to be taken over by the Spirit. And that's how the, the choice for love comes into awareness. When you are so taken over and swept up into the love, it then seems more obvious and also easier and easier to just choose the love, to choose the state of mind that is love. It's like you don't want to give your focus and attention on trying to decide between things of this world, but instead rather just to be in a receptive mode. And when you are aligned and really in a flow with the Spirit, then the seeming decisions as you watch the body move through time and space, those, those come very easily. It's like going into a restaurant, sitting down, and the waitress brings the menu. And even if it's a large menu, you just smile and you open it up and you are drawn immediately to that which to order. It's not a search. It's really all given. Everything is given. And then as you build your trust, you start to realize you can expand that circle of what is given to include more and more aspects of the world that you perceive.
and then every day is given. And you're so grateful. You're so grateful to be living in this given state of mind. It's really very precious. So that's a good start for us. It's, it feels very precious to have this opportunity to share in this way. And I do look forward to this being very interactive. Seems like we have the chat room as a mechanism for that interactivity. Wherever you seem to be in the world, whatever time zone, yeah, it just is a very simple, simple way of connecting and sharing from the heart. And I have a main speaker channel, it's called David Hofmeister, ACIM teacher. But I also have a Spanish speaker channel. And I do hope to have collaborations with some of my friends. Spanish speaking friends that are very good at it being bilingual. Oh, okay. Here we are. Sharon Hall. Hi, Sharon. I see you've typed something in onto the chat. Sharon writes, can you speak about discerning between conditional love and unconditional love? Thanks. Thank you, Sharon. Yeah, I think discernment is something that is a lifelong journey. And when it comes to discernment around love, or even we could say the reflections of love in terms of this world, We have to go through a purification process. And I think the simplest way of describing this purification process is we are coming to a discernment between the ego, which is what the conditional love would be. The ego puts conditions and parameters and limits and control on everything it perceives because it's it is itself a belief in limitation and lack. So we could say anything that seems to be conditional love is really not true love at all. It's, it involves ego concepts and definitions, ego generated feelings, and it's very limited and very time based. Whereas unconditional love, the love that comes from God, our source, the love that comes from spirit and is our very essence and being, that comes through in a way of the desire to extend that love. And so some of the ideas that have helped me over the years have been to teach only love, for that is what you are. And by teach, I mean demonstrate. It's come into the desire to give, the desire to expand and extend without 
any sort of limit or condition placed on that extension. We talk about the difference between conditional love and unconditional love. It's, it's the difference between getting and giving. Conditional love always has an underlying or ulterior motive to get something, to get an outcome, to get something in terms of material. Could be anything from receiving of material gifts or even affection, looking for something that can be possessed or retained. And it's looking in the world of images to find something that will act as love, that will be as love, when actually true love, unconditional love, comes from within us. It's been said many times, you can't love yourself without loving others, and you certainly can't love others without loving yourself, because it's a state of mind that transcends the idea of comparisons and competition and, and certainly transcends getting, the getting mechanisms of the ego. So if I tie that in with what I was talking about earlier, it means that We need to be in a, a trusting place to listen and follow the guidance within and then to extend that guidance by following and, and following through. So it's not just enough to listen, but it's actually important to follow what is instructed or follow what is guided. And then as you build up this trusting relationship with this presence, with this love in your mind, within yourself, then the desire to look to the world for the love fades away and and disappears. And you feel the strength, the inner strength of this love coming through you. And if we carry it out, we start to realize that that part of the the difficulty of discerning between conditional love and unconditional love is the attachment to various people. And that attachment to people can only arise from a belief that, that the lacking love is a condition that, that is, is real. And therefore it seeks to find people, places, experiences, to fill up that hole or that lack. So it's really precious. And for me it has been a journey where I, I started Praying, meditating, studying the Course in Miracles, really giving myself over fully to be washed and cleaned and cleansed and purified, and then 
feeling these promptings and these nudges, these little heartstrings pulling and tugging on me in very strong ways, and, and then following and going for it on this great adventure. And now I feel like there's been so many witnesses witnesses to this love that I feel in my heart. It just seems like there's been thousands and thousands of witnesses over the years of welcome, of embrace, of nurturing, of abundance. And yet the key is that I'm aware that these are all just reflections of the love that I feel within. And when people say, wow, your life has really changed, I really see that it's like, I changed my mind about this world. I, I saw it as a place of, of giving and extending instead of one of getting and possessing and accumulating. It, it, it was a, a shift in my purpose that opened it up for me. And with the shift to purpose, it's the, the witnesses of love are everywhere. I mean, every single day, as I watch this world, I am still profoundly humbled at the reflections every day. This morning I went to a, a meeting nearby in the neighborhood and and it was so loving. It's like I lost track of time, it went on for some hours, but but the love is, is so obvious and so palpable. And I realize it's it's because I want that, that that has been my desire. As Jesus tells us in the Course in Miracles, he says, uh, when you want only love, you will see nothing else. So that's the incentive right there. That's, that's the incentive to really become very good at discerning between conditional love and unconditional love, because you want to give the love in your heart that you may behold it, that you may recognize it as yourself. And that's the meaning, of course, behind love your neighbor as yourself. Literally, in this love, it's so expansive that there are no differentiations between self and another self, as if there could be more than one. We really come to this realization that God's love is, is what love is. And whatever seemed to be a substitution, yeah, just falls away. It fades and fades and falls away. So thank you, thank you for for that message, Sharon's. You're helping me see how this works as I put myself in here in this little studio and then look at my chat room and ah, oh, such a welcoming thing to see, to see your message. Well, very good. Well, thank you. Thank you for tuning in and if you weren't able to catch this live, I, I know this will be archived and posted up on on Spreaker, 
Oh, Sharon's writing again. Sharon's writing, this is making me think about cause and effect. Yeah, and that's it. And cause is capitalized and effect is capitalized. So it's, yeah, it really is as simple as the, the creator is the cause and the creation is the effect and, and the cause knows its effect and the effect knows its cause. And, and this is where the glory of God's love is revealed. So any attempt to look for the will of God outside of this cause and effect relationship, this eternal cause and effect relationship, to look for God's will in form or in specifics, we could say, to be more accurate, that's missing the mark, missing the the point of cause and effect. God and Christ, creator and creation. That's what the kingdom of heaven is all about. Divine cause and divine effect. That's where the peace comes in. The peace that passeth the understanding of the world. Peace of God. So thank you for tuning in and I look forward to sharing again on another episode. Peace.